So definite loops use the for keyword, and the idea of a definite loop is it's going to loop through some set of things. It might be a set of lines in a file, it might be a set of characters in a string, it might be a set of strings in a list of strings, um, but whatever it is, it's sort of going to run a finite number of times, depending on the thing that it's looping through. And uh, we like this. And it uh, it's an easier way to construct it, and we actually don't have to deal with the iteration variable. The for loop includes a mechanism to construct the iteration variable for us. So it's definite loops iterate through the members of a set. So here's a very simple uh, for loop. Um, and so you see the uh, for keyword, and in is also a keyword. And the iteration variable is something we put right here. This i is declared. This i is like an assignment statement. And i is going to take on successive values. So i is going to be 5 the first time through the loop. Then i is going to be 4 the second time through the loop. Third, 2, 1. So i is going to be assigned 5 different times to 5 different values. And then the loop is going to run. It's going to run once with 5, once with 4, once with 3, once with 2, and once with 1. And so this block of code we have contracted, say, execute it 5 times, with these values of i. i is that iteration variable. i is the thing changing through each iteration of the loop. Okay, And so that's why this prints out 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then when it's done it finishes it. And so this is a much more direct syntax for looping five times and setting an iteration variable. You kind of all uh, combine it into this one thing, right? All into one thing. So it's, it's quite nice. So you don't have to be going through a list of numbers. There's all kinds of things that we can iterate through with for. And by the way, while I'm sitting here, don't, I named my variable friends, because that's a list of strings, and friend, which is the iteration variable. I'm using singular and plural because it helps you read it. Python doesn't understand singular and plural. So just because you say friends doesn't mean Python knows it's a list. Python does know it's a list, but it doesn't know by the name of the variable I've chosen. That's your basic mnemonic variable warning. These are cool variable names, but I don't want you to get be confused by them. So you can loop through a variable. So we're going to take this list of three strings and stick it in friends. And so friend is going to iterate through that. So the first time through, friend is going to be Joseph. Second time through, it's going to be Glenn. Third time through, it's going to be Sally. And so that just says run this loop, run this code, the indented code, three times. Each time the variable friend takes on a successive version of a successive value that's in the friends array. So it says, happy birthday, Joseph, Glenn, Sally, and then we come out of the loop and we print done. So if we try to draw a picture of what this is really doing, um, the for loop is actually doing a whole bunch of stuff that we would have to do with maybe separate statements in the while loop. Um, first, it decides how many times to run the loop. So it's answering the done question, which way do we go? And it is also then moving i ahead. It's managing the iteration variable. If you go back to uh, the, it's initializing it too. If you go back to the while loop, we had n equals zero, while n greater than zero, n equals n minus one. So we had like three lines to control the loop to manage the iteration variable. But with a for loop, we don't have to do that. And so that's all taken care of. And so that basically says, you know, the for loop, by you using a for loop, are we done? No, we have five things to work. Well, set i to the first one, run it. We're not done because we've got one more. Set it to the second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and now we're done. And that is all handled in a single line of code and that includes the iteration variable and the set of things through which we are going to iterate through. I really like the word in. Um, it is mathematically, it, I mean, it reminds me of uh, the set theory where you say this is a member of this set or the for each. Uh, math isn't important here, but if you do know math, the vertical bar means such that, right, is a member of this set and those, that kind of stuff, member of the set. Um, I'll erase the math stuff so we don't over math, but it's like, for each of the values in the set 54321, run this loop setting the iteration variable i to the members of that set. So 
in reminds me, for those of us who are math oriented, in reminds me of a really nice concept in mathematics. Okay? Now, you could think of this as sort of this looping structure where the for loop, and this is pretty much how it actually runs inside the computer, right? Where it, it initializes it, I, it runs this, runs this thing five times, and then executes. That's one way to think about it. But you could also think about it in a about it in a somewhat more abstract way, and think of it as all we're really doing is we have a contract with Python that says I, we're supposed to run this code five times, and I is supposed to be five, four, three, two, and one. So you could imagine this might be what's going on. The for loop sets I to five, runs our code. The for loop sets I to four, runs our code. The for loop sets I to three, runs our code. The for loop sets I to two, runs our code. For loop sets I to one, and runs our code. All we know is our code was run five, ran five times, and by contract, each successive time, we get a different value for i, and the value for i is taken from this set. And so this is just one way to think about it, to say to yourself, oh yeah, this is one way to think about it as it's actually, and this is how it really works, but this is also kind of logically the contract that Python is making for us. So up next we're going to talk about taking this notion of doing something to a lot of items, but accomplishing something with that, and I call these uh, loop idioms.